Chris, can you tell us what we're doing here today? Well, we're gonna jack up my Jeep using a high lift jack. And we're gonna do that with the aid of the DLA, the D-Lift adapter. And the purpose of this is, it's actually a device that will allow you to lock your jack to your vehicle using the D-ring uh, and the D-ring attachment point that most people probably already have uh, on their vehicles. There's a little hook in here that's gonna capture that D-ring and it's gonna get locked into place with the jack. So basically we're just gonna slip this over the D-ring, push the hook up, and we bring our jack over. Bring it into play. And then we're just gonna stick this pin right through and it's got a little locking tab for the pin. Okay? So that's how we're gonna lift our vehicle. And like I said, we're now completely locked to the Jeep. So the chances of the Jeep slipping off the jack have just gone to zero. Just uh, like normal, using all safety precautions, uh, making sure that your vehicle's in gear or your tires are chalked or however you need to do, uh, we're gonna go ahead and lift the vehicle. And there's no way that the vehicle's gonna slip off. Now, in flat terrain like we're on right now, this may not seem like a big deal. In perfect circumstances, we'd want to jack our vehicle on a flat and level surface. All right, now I want to show you something here. We're at a little bit of a lean. You see how the jack is starting to lean? Yeah. But it's, it's still captured by the DLA. My tire's completely off. One more hit. See that? Oh, does that make you nervous? It doesn't make me nervous with the DLA on there. Oh. Now, a regular jack connection point would make me very nervous. So I see the whole Jeep shifting. But there's no way that's going to come off. Right. The other thing is, when you usually get to this point in jacking, when all the tension's off the jack, it usually just drops straight to the ground. Uh, it's still captured by the DLA, so you're not going to lose your toes. Uh, by this thing slamming down on your feet. Unfortunately, the DLA doesn't do anything to secure the base of the jack. Right. So that still has to be secured somehow, um, either on solid ground or using a, an off-road block or a piece of wood if you're in soft terrain. So from a safety perspective, I'm not worried about these two coming disconnected. So that was uh, the primary purpose for the DLA is, is that safety feature of locking it to the bumper. But we've also built in this non-marring top surface that has, uh, has a cutout for like tubes or rock rails. And this isn't rubber. This is not rubber. This is like a, a polyurethane, like a hard plastic. And because of that, we can go in here and get underneath and jack in places that some people may not normally jack from. Like there's the bottom of the bumper. Now I don't have the same safety feature in that there's nothing completely marrying the jack to the vehicle. So I can shift that around. Um, but depending on what I'm trying to do, I may want that. The other cool thing is with that circular cutout, you can come over here to say like a, uh, a side tube. So it's designed. And it fits perfectly with these. To fit right in to most standard tubes. I've got a tire off the ground already. Um, so that's a convenient way to use the DLA. Why would you need to jack your Jeep if it was like this, first of all? I mean, so we don't always get to choose where we have to do a tire change. Um, obviously, we tried to pick something really precarious here. Um, I wouldn't necessarily change a tire using this, uh, you know, right here. But I figured it, at least it will help me demonstrate how being off camber isn't really 
um, a negative, it's actually a positive in this case because look at the angle of the jack to the D-ring. Um, you wouldn't normally jack a vehicle at this angle for fear that it would slip off. But you can see, as long as the base has a solid foundation, the tougher the angle, actually the better the DLA excels because it's locked, it's not gonna come undone. So now if you come look from the front at the angle I'm jacking, nobody in their right mind would use a high lift at that angle without something like a DLA to hold it to the vehicle. As a matter of fact, there we go, my front tire is now off the ground. And that's about as off camber as I'd want to change a tire anyway. So in my opinion, that's not a negative, that's, that's a benefit of the tool. It's $160. It is. And a lot of people are say, you know, why would I spend $160 on something for a high lift jack when I spend $80 on a high lift jack? That is a very common feeling. Um, I will tell you in all honesty and full disclosure, I felt exactly the same way when I found out how much it was the first time I used it. And I actually talked to the guys. I'm like, hey, this is before, you know, I was involved with Jeep's needs. I said, hey, why is this thing so expensive? And um, basically we talked a little bit about the engineering. It's engineered to be more strong than your jack, right? So um, as a matter of fact, in the uh, static load testing of this, they took it to somebody who tested the strength, how much it could handle, how much weight it could take, and the jack broke before the DLA broke. And I guess if you're building a product that's designed to help add safety, you don't want this to be the weak point. So it's very, I'll call it over-engineered, and I think that's a fair term, but it's also a single piece of steel that is cold rolled and bent into this shape. They could have cast it, they could have welded it, they could have done all those things, but this made the product the strongest it could have been. And unfortunately, that's not a cheap thing to manufacture. So we have, right now, we're outsourcing manufacturing uh, to a metal company in Pennsylvania that does the work for us, and it just costs quite a bit of money to have this done. On top of that, we've got to put the non-marring surface on, They've got to be powder coated. Um, and the other thing is, you know, we'll go spend three or $400 on a light bar, and yet we balk at paying 160 bucks for something designed to keep our jack from killing us. It's not worth using a high lift without it. And once people understand the value of the product, then the $160 really is chump change. Okay, so the first time I came out and we did a little testing of this, we kind of had some issues with the D-rings fitting onto the DLA. So what happened with that? We did, and actually I'm really thankful that um, things didn't go textbook when we first met. And the reason is, um, sometimes you just don't know what you don't know until it starts getting out in the wild. And what we found is, while it uses a standard three-quarter inch D-ring, it turns out the worn D-rings, which is what we were using that night, and quite frankly, worn D-rings are what comes with a lot of Jeeps. Worn came with my Jeeps, I believe worn came with your Jeeps. Uh, the problem is they're designed and shaped just slightly different than the other D-rings that we've been using for testing. They're a little bit shorter, which means the shoulders come into play a lot sooner, and they're a little bit wider, which means we were having challenges with the D-ring actually fitting into the DLA. So from that night where we tested and realized we had a little bit of retooling to do, we redesigned the product now to be compatible with what we believe to be any D-ring option out there as long as the standard three-quarter D-ring. We've got plenty of room. We've also um, widened this hole here for the pin to give a little bit of variance because you've got another variable in here which is the jack and the jack hole. So uh, if there's any opportunity for variances to be off, we give a little bit more room there to make that happen. And that's just trying to make the product more compatible with a variety of D-rings and jacks. And you know, the jacks, while they're all from the same manufacturer, High Lift, um, they're cast and 
you know, over the years they vary just a little bit from jack model to jack model, they may vary. So we try to make sure that we cover all of them and then all of the standard D-rings. Um, however, I'll say if anybody has a problem and the D-lift uh, adapter is not fitting like it's supposed to, let us know, we'll fix it. Chris, that first time you showed me the D-lift adapter, we used my jack and it didn't work. Right, and so. And I'm thinking I have a high lift jack. <laughs> you're close. It's a high lift like jack. And uh, I don't know exactly what requirements there are uh, for manufacture of jacks that are similar to high lift, but my understanding is they'll have to be changed a little bit from the original design. Uh, these are basically, this is a Smitty belt. This is the one you have, and it's a great jack. Um, and the question that came up is, will the DLA fit uh, a jack such as the Smitty belt, which is kind of like the high lift? And we started looking at it, uh, and we thought, you know what? It's got a similar jack foot. Um, the only difference is the hole's in a different position versus the, uh, the high lift here where it's got a hole, you know, which obviously our pin is designed to go into. Um, so I was wondering at first if just changing the hole position would make a difference. And I went back to, um, to the other guys at Jeep's Needs and we talked a little bit about, do we want to try and make this product um, compatible with a variety of jack types? And at the, the, the first, uh, at first we thought, yeah, let's, let's take a look at that. But as we got deeper into it, we realized we really can't do that for several reasons. One of them on the Smitty Belt, for example, is you'll notice the difference between the Smitty Belt jack and the high lift is these little shoulders here. And that's what we have these cutouts in the DLA for. What the shoulder does is it prevents the DLA from rotating out of position. So once you have the pin in, right, it can't rotate because of the shoulder. The Smitty Belt doesn't have any of those shoulders. So even if we were able to pin it, we've got nothing to keep it from flipping and rotating. So uh, we decided it's probably best to stick with the original idea. Um, the large majority of the market out there uh, for off-roading uh, recovery devices is with the high lift jack. It's not that the Smitty Belt's not gonna be a good jack for folks, it's just um, we decided we should focus on where we originally intended because we know this is gonna be a safe combination.